Hello, intergalactic wormhole travelers. What? JLX Ruiz from Volander Forge hammered out an awesome harpoon style cutter and sent it over for me to finish up and put in a charity auction. So let's go! We didn't go anywhere. Alex forged this blade from 1 quarter inch 1084 bar stock. It's got to be 99% to shape. It's thin, clean, the edge is straight, the spine is straight. It's really amazing work. And fortunately, he sent a video of that process for us to look at. Let's check that out now. Check it out now. Thank you. This is some really nice forging. We should all strive to work at this level someday. If you notice here, the tip is pointed basically in one nice hot heat. You guys probably recognize Mr. Ruiz's photo. He won episode 8 of season 5, Forged and Fire the Horseman Axe, and was featured in Winter Edition of Blade Magazine in 2017. He teaches lessons at South Texas Association of Bladesmith alongside Tobin Nieto in San Antonio, Texas. So just a few heats ago, you would not have recognized this as the profile of a knife. At least most of us wouldn't have. Alex has gone through a very deliberate sequence of steps that he's executing on. And to me, this is blacksmithing at its finest. It's that moment when everything suddenly falls out and the madness is revealed to be method and you're staring at a piece of metal that's been transformed in a very intentional way, in a very clever way. Uh, often there's a lot of very practiced techniques Blacksmithing is not for dummies. There's there's a lot of very clever things, very smart things that go on, and we see some of that in bladesmithing very often. But but the art of blacksmithing embraces such a, a wider, you know, swath of that stuff. It's really an amazing, amazing craft.
All right, my turn. The blade hasn't been quenched yet, so we'll start out with some normalization cycles in the heat treat oven. After the second cycle, unwrapping it yields some interesting results. Yep, it's warped. Sometimes that happens, and especially in thinner blades. So I'm going to put it back in the forge. We'll strain it out and we'll do some forge side normalization cycles, which is uh, a totally okay and reliable way to normalize 1084. At this stage, I'm not going to quench the blade quite yet. I'm trying something completely new here, and as a result, I want to keep some options open. So we're, we're not going to quench anything. We're going to work on the handle a little bit, make sure things are under control, and then we'll move on to quenching. The Corby bolt fasteners I was using just didn't cut it. They pulled away from the form and our brass is warping as a result. So I'm going to hammer the brass flat and then we'll use some loveless bolts as fasteners instead. They're much stronger than Corby bolts. I should be able to reuse them.
More countersunk holes are drilled in order to flip over our template to the other side for the other side of the handle. I had to grind off the loveless bolts from the first effort, which I didn't really anticipate, so I'm just going to use regular bolts this time around. Now that I'm confident the handles are squared away, I'll be hardening the knife. And you're probably wondering why I haven't drilled the handle holes yet. And you know, I have some carbide bits if we need them. If I can't temper it soft enough to drill later, we'll just do that. But I don't want to do any grinding and drilling yet because I don't want it to warp. It's a thin handle. And we're just going to heat treat it as is and we'll work with what we got after that. I really wanted to maintain a forged finish along the sides of the handle and recess the brass away from that so it's framed by a forged finish and you just have that bulging or rounded part attached to the sides of the handles. But I didn't tell Alex that this was my intent. Since I didn't tell him that, these handles will require a small amount of grinding away a forged finish to make the surface fit flush with handles and keeping that sanded area exposed wouldn't really match the rest of the forged finish on the blade so the entire handle will be covered with brass. No sweat, still gonna look good. When you look down the spine, things look wavy and the knife doesn't look straight. And that's because the sides haven't been ground. There are lumps and bumps along the sides as well as the spine surface itself, which is somewhat wavy, meaning nothing looks straight, parallel, or perpendicular when you look down it. But if you flip it over, it reveals a straight line from the butt of the taper tang down to the edge of the knife, so we're okay.
Here I did consider sanding the pins down flush and then repainting the surface, which may or have more or less made the, the pins invisible, but I didn't know if they would hold as well, and I got nervous thinking about painting the surface of the handles further without anything under them to support them. Um, one could drill a quarter inch hole in the handle and then put a piece of brass, a quarter inch piece of brass through it to support the handle, then drill a one sixteenth hole through that for the peening pin. Essentially that one quarter inch piece would act like a standoff screw, you know, maybe next time. A huge gracious thank you to J. Alex Ruiz for forging this awesome, awesome knife and in such expert fashion. Let me know what you guys think about it and go check out the charity auction. You can find details below. That's it. Looks like we're done. No, mu no music. We're done. It's over. And done. Alright, you guys have a good one.